excited to share the word with you today. And by saying that, let's start with a word of prayer. All right. So, Father, thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, time that we get to gather together as a spiritual family, to gather as a uh, from the scattered church to uh, gathered church, God. Lord, I pray for that that you would illumine your word as. Uh, that we would understand it, God, as we will hear clearly from you, God. Thank you. We love you. Praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I just remembered what I was going to say. I'm just excited for that one church. <laughs> I was thinking, like, I was going to say something. Right? <laughs> I forgot. So one, it's, it's, it's going to be historical. It's like it, our spiritual fans has been here for, what, seven, seven years. It's the first time that we get to do this together. This is going to be historical. And as, as I was thinking, that it's going to be the first time. You, I wouldn't want to be, miss this one, you know. It's a great, like what Hannah alluded earlier, like it's the first time to get to see not just the people in, in San Diego. We get to see them together and worshiping together. It's, it's just an exciting time that we get to do it. And you know what? I, I value when I value those things because if I can go to a place, to a Comic-Con, to to, to attend a conference, to go to San Francisco, to play a basketball game, to, to watch a concert, Arlene. <laughs> right? I mean, those are the things that, that's nice. But this one is nice also. Would you agree with me? <laughs> All right. So anyway, so shifting gears again. Uh, now, so I'd like to ask, uh, how long you have witnessed seeing a wildfire? Wildfire here. Have you witnessed seeing a wildfire? Yeah. So. Remember back, like, yeah, I remember. I was just gonna say that. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, in this area, we've seen a wildfire close. Okay. Would you say this? Oh, that's. I see a wildfire. It's, my house is just five miles away. I'm so excited. What a lovely sight to see a wildfire. <laughs> you wouldn't say that, right? So, anyway, um, who among you would agree with me that a wildfire is devastating and powerful? Right? It is. So, actually, growing up in the Philippines, uh, there's no wildfire, but there's some typhoons. <laughs> it's, but it's also powerful and devastating. But so, coming I mean, here, like, I would see a wildfire, it's just uh, a new experience <laughs> for me. So, about, I think I remember tw about 2020, I think uh, the eyes would say this. Uh, there was this Los Angeles wildfire, uh, and I would see it. I would live here in Pasadena, I would see it. Uh, it's, it's, that time was in lockdown and we were, uh, I'd say, I would bike around and I would see the wildfires. Like, I would, it was terrifying because I don't know if the wind would go near our area. So it's, it's in near the Sierra Madre Mountains. If some of you would, Jesse would be living for motors, you would see that, right? So anyway, it's, so one, thing, one time uh, I was looking around online, so like I was looking for a deal. So, so like, oh, this is a good deal. So like, oh, it's it's cheap. So I went, So I had my boys come. Okay, let's go. Let's go uh, get this. Lo and behold, the place that I went is near the wildfire. There's like helicopters and like it's like and and I was like, should I continue? So like I, I did it, and I was there. I was almost stopped for like 20 minutes. It was like I I, I was afraid that something uh, the lock that they would lock that area and then it's just a uh, different experience. Now, anyway, why, why am I saying that? Uh, I have to say that a single spark of wildfire, you know, it could be, it could cause natural, natural, uh, through natural causes, it could, but it could devastate a lot of houses, homes, acres and acres of lands, which is a single spark, right? So, anyway, um, why, the reason why I'm saying that, because this is connected to my message today. We are actually in our 10th week of our series. We are in our book study called Living Faith. All right, Living Faith. So, who will you appreciate our series, our book study so far? Yeah, Tita Lucy, you're so excited I can see in your face. <laughs> Sorry, I have to call you. Yours, my eye, I, I, I captured my eye. Uh, anyway, so, all right, so, uh, Living Faith, right? So, let's read through the text this afternoon. Uh, it's in James 3, 5 to 6, right? James says here, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark, right? So the tongue also is a fire. Uh, uh, the world of evil among the parts of the body, it corrupts the whole body. 
sets the whole course of one's life on fire, one's life on fire, and it set itself set on fire by hell. Wow, right? So, okay, what's the text that we just read? So, after chapter 2, here's the background of what we just read, right? After chapter 2 of James giving instructions in, about having an active faith, having that living faith, right? So, reminding them that faith should be accompanied by good works. Faith should be accompanied by good deeds. As faith reflects our action in proper obedience, James highlights another topic to his leaders. So, it, which is the tongue, right? James focuses this time about speech, right? When you say tongue, it talks about words, it talks about speech, right? Which is how we use our tongue. The tongue. How long you have, it doesn't have a tongue here, right? <laughs> no, I, I think like everybody has a tongue, right? The tongue, even small, even small, affects a believer's life. It is so small, but it can affect a believer's life if not used in the proper way. Right? So James starts his point about the tongue by stating a point regarding his, regarding teachers. Oh, who among you have our teachers here? No? Your teacher? Doctor? Alright, so alright, so let's read in the verse one. James three one. It says here, not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly and right, so what does teacher mean here like teacher in uh, Greek definition is called didaskalos right, so what does it mean the one who teaches concerning the things of God so and the duties of man so that's what it means right so in NIRV version it says here my brothers and sisters my brothers and sisters, right? So, he is putting an emphasis that this section is specifically to the family of believers. It's like, this is stressing this point, like, to the family of believers in the faith. While James has stated in this text that most of them shouldn't become teachers, like what we just read earlier, he is not preventing them. It's like, hey, you, it's like, don't become teachers, become a nurse, it's better. <laughs> That's high page jam. No, it doesn't say that. So, did no, it's just saying, uh, do not become teachers. He's not saying, he is not preventing them, but simply warning them. Why? Why is James warning them? Right? Because James is reminding his readers that teachers teach. Of course, that's what they do, right? They teach. And of course, if you are a teacher of the word, you use words more than others, and therefore, they are held more liable to a higher standard because of the things that they say. Simply that. And as we continue in verse 2, it says here, we all stumble in many ways. All of us. All of us stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. So in NLT version of verse 2, it says here, for if we could not control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. So... What does this mean? James is simply emphasizing that from the start of this, that everyone, if you're not a teacher, if you didn't raise your hand earlier, every, it, this, go, this speaks to, for you as well. Right? This goes out to you. If you're a brother, a sister, a believer in faith, this is for all of us. Right? Every believer should pay attention. This is not, God, James is actually stating here, this is for you guys. This is for you, church. This is not for the people who are unreached yet, right? So every believer should pay attention to this warning about controlling the tongue, right? Because if not, we will stumble in this area, right? So if you do not know this, this is a good reminder for you right now, right? So the tongue is actually the vehicle that communicates our words. If you do not have the tongue, there's no way for you to communicate your words. There's a, there are different ways, but this is, if it's humanly, this is how you communicate, right? Everyone should, say, should pay attention to examine. All of us should uh, pay attention to examine the source and the fruit of our tongue. Because when we say something, it starts from somewhere, right? It could be in your mind, it could be your heart, 
But later on, I don't want to go ahead of it. But this starts, whatever we, speak, we say, it starts from something, right? We have to be careful with the words that come out of our mouth. That's kind of like, uh, I hear, heard that before, right? So with that, I'd like to share with you three things, three simple things, right? That we can learn from James' instruction and warning regarding the tongue. Regarding the tongue, even small, my friends, my brothers and sisters, the first point here is that small, but it can steer in the right or wrong direction. Let me say that again. The tongue, even small, can steer in the right or wrong direction. Does that mean, you know, actually in James 3, 3, it says it's there, I'd like to just, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, like mouths of horses. Or right, let's say, I'm going to show you an image. That's actually, James highlights two illustrations about the tongue. It says here, can you see the horse? His name's Richie. It's kind of rich. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, it's not a joke. All right, so, so the average weight of a full-size horse is 900 to 2,000 pounds, right? So, but the average measure of the horse bit, which the thing that controls it, is only five to six inches. Now, even that, that's what James is saying here, that even small, it can steer the horse to the direction the rider wants it to go. So wanna go to Costco, let's go. <laughs> steer to the right direction, go to in and out No, I'm just saying. Because the gas prices are going high, right? Might as well use. No. Okay, so if not paying attention, the rider can go in the wrong direction. This is what James is saying here. Right? So you could, if, the, if the rider is not paying attention, he could fall off a cliff. Right? So, or he can steer to the direction that he, the rider wants to go. Another illustration that James mentioned in verse 4, it says here, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Right? So in the same way a small rudder, even tiny like the horse bit, it can help you steer to go to your destination. Regardless how powerful the winds are. Some of my friends are going on cruise. <laughs> All right, so it can go to the destination that you want it to go. The ship can go, can take you wherever it wants to go because of the rudder, right? So if not careful, it can steer in the wrong direction. Could get you off course. And of course, it could also hit an iceberg, which we do not want that to happen, right? So, okay, so James 3, 5a, it says here, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. What does that mean? We can see here in NLT version that in the same way the tongue is a small part of the person's body. It is not five to six inches, but it is small, but it talks big. It says there, in, it talks big. Your tongue, it talks big, regardless. Regardless, right? So in the same way our tongue says here in the text that even small, it makes great boasts in NLT. That's what it says. Every day, as we start our day, right? How do you start your day normally? Pray, maybe read Bible or do, right? So every day as we start our day, we can use our tongue to the course that we want it to go, right? You can go to the right direction or to the wrong direction. Right? Go left. It's like, how do you use it? Right? Whatever the believer has spoken to himself and believed, it, not just the day, but might also set the course of his entire life. It can set the course, the direction of your entire life. With this, with the tongue, it can set the course of your entire life. Right? Now, as followers of Christ, how we use our tongue, how we use our words, define the course of life, of our life, of your life, and the people around you. And that is the truth. And how you use your tongue affects not you, but also the people around you. And so, the question is, do you use your tongue to steer you in the right or wrong direction? How do you use it? That's my first point. Second, is that small, but has the power, even small, the tongue is 
even small, it has the power to build. Your tongue has the power to build or destroy. Your tongue has the power to build or destroy. So it says here in James 3, 5b to 6, Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. This is what we read earlier, right? The tongue also is a fire. Right? A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Not just a portion. Like James didn't include it. Like, oh, wait, this just, it corrupts like 10% of your body, no? Your tongue, even small, can corrupt your whole body. And so, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and itself set on fire by him. James is straight to the to his point here. If you are not careful to use your tongue, this could happen to all of us, right? So James illustrates in this text that how a small spark can cause fire in a great forest, right? The tongue, powerful like a fire, if controlled, can cook actually, you know, if, if controlled, our tongue, it can actually use in a good way to build, right? If controlled, it could actually cook a person's meal, right? You could, who among you here loves to cook? I know. Uh, that is, you know. So how do you cook? Do you use, there are different ways to cook, but you need to, the, one of the best, one, well, of course, you use fire, like, if, so to cook, right? So it can use, it can be used to cook a person's meal, or if not controlled, can destroy your house. Right? So it's not controlled. In the same way, just like electricity, right? So if, if it has the power to provide power to light a home, it has the electricity, it has the power to, uh, to move your car, which is if you have an electric, right? So in the same way, in the same, if not controlled, it is powerful enough to destroy your home. That is how powerful the tongue is, right? In the same way, the tongue is powerful enough to build or destroy a believer's life. It has the power to build or destroy a believer's life. So it actually corrupts a whole body. Lies, that's what it said. Lies, deception, whatever it says, say to the body will dictate how you will respond. So the question is like, what are the words that can be said that would corrupt the whole body? What, what does that mean, right? So what are the words that could be dis destroy? What are the words that can destroy a person's body? It could be what? Maybe you've been saying this. It could be hurtful words, right? So it's unintentionally you say hurtful words, right? So again, James is stating here, this is for the believers of the faith, my brothers and sisters. This is like, oh, you, they, are, they know, they have a relationship with Jesus. They know who Jesus is, and yet they still say the things that they're not supposed to, right? So though, what are those words? It could be hurtful words to some curse words. When you're, it's like, even if you're happy, if you're sad, you use curse words. Come on, spoken words to you could be used to destroy life. Tactless words, flattery, everything, right? So are there words that you have spoken to yourself or someone that might have led to that person's life to be destroyed? That is the question. As believers, we can use our tongue to build. We can use our tongue to encourage. We can use our tongue to uni to cause unity. We can use our tongue to pacify. We can use it to create peace. God gave you tongue, that tongue to be used in the proper way, right? So to help someone heal, to encourage, or we can use our tongue to destroy a person's life like fire in a forest to discourage to ignite an argument. Start a war among peers. Start a war on social media among peers. Or to cause hurt, or to cause pain. Right, so I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I'm just saying, right? So, so how we use our tongue could affect how others view us. That is the truth, how we, how, what am I trying to say? How we use our tongue could affect how others view us. What does that mean? Depends on how you use your tongue. People can say, oh, that person, you know what, Len? Do uh, you know Len? Oh, yeah, I know Len. She's the one who likes to encourage people. You know, I like, or you know, Bea, oh, yeah, Bea, she's, she's, the, she's always full of life. Oh, you know Arlene? She's, 
See, I'm so I'm so happy to hang, hang out with her because she's so full of life. I like, I love having conversations with her, with Christian, right? She's always full of life, right? Not with Jesse, no, where's Jesse? Not here. <laughs> so alright, so and I have or you can say or you can use your tongue, not just not in a in a good way, but also in a bad way, right? So how do you use your tongue? By lying, right? They use it to lie. It's like it, become, it became habitual for you to lie when your spouse asks you, hey, what are you doing? You're doing a different thing. When your uh, parents ask you, what are you doing? You're saying a different thing. Your co-workers, your boss. Again, change is saying, this message is for the believers in the faith. I don't know. Is this going though? I can't find it. <laughs> I started here. This <laughs> and it's fine. I can still read it. <laughs> All right, Krishna. So, no, no, I'm good, Krishna. So, or you can use it in a bad way, right? So, the question is how do you use your tongue? How do you use your tongue? Do you use it to lie? Do you use it to manipulate? Oh, this person is the manipulator, right? So, then people might view you as that person who's a liar. So, oh, that person doesn't, wait, she's, let your yes be yes, let your no be no, right? That's a word like, oh, she just says yes, but the truth is she doesn't give up. Uh, it's a no-show. <laughs> right? So, it could be manipulative cunning. You could use word. It could be divisive. That per You can be tagged as, oh, that person is the divisive person. That person is the cunning person. So, I remember. So, that, so some people would view you as such. Or you could use, so some, actually some people could view you. Like, oh, I'm, you could view yourself as, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a failure. I'm, I, was, I was just unfriendly. So, by my friend, like, she didn't like my FBIG post, like, what's that? So, oh, I'm all alone, I'm insecure. What, where do you base your insecurity girl? Because of the people who just said that, right? So, I remember when I was young, so my mom would say to me, you know you're the instigator. you instigator in the family. I don't know if Hannah remembers that. So, she was like, huh? When I was a kid, I was like, oh, talaga, really? So, oh, did she say that? Or, oh, I would go to my, I have two sisters. Oh, how did she say that? Oh, and then I go to my other sister. Oh, she said this. And this, oh. Oh, then I would go to my dad or my mom. And I was like, and I was like, oh, oh, my mom, this is what dad said. Oh, really? Oh, she's, she's like that. So, I would always do that. That also goes with my friends. Like, oh, oh you know what? But uh, I said, bro, this guy said this. I would instigate people to, you know, it's like, and it's so satisfying, but it, uh, that was in the past, right? So this, I shouldn't leave, live in that. I'm just saying, if you're an instigator, thank you for this chat. All right, there you go. So where did it come from? It came, it came from the tongue, so hi. All right, so, so here's the question. Which one would you choose? Would you use your tongue to build or destroy? Your life, would you use your tongue to build or destroy a person's life? Either way, you can choose, right? Which one do you want to choose, right? So, lastly, Sam James said here, says here, small but untamable. Here's my third point. Um, small but untamable. It says here in James 3, 7 to 8, in NIV version, all kinds of animals birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, full of deadly poison. How long have you been to SeaWorld? SeaWorld? <laughs> have you seen animals tamed there? <laughs> like this side. You see them tamed, right? Otherwise, they would be in the other part of the ocean. <laughs> right? So, animals are being tamed. This is what they're saying then. Being tamed, but no human being can tame the tongue. James highlights another warning to his readers that while different kinds of animals can be tamed, no human being can tame the tongue. Even if you try, it's like even if you do your best to tame it, let me say, let me say this word. Uh, let me highlight this and let me say it out loud, right? So, even if you try and even if you do your best to tame your tongue, you cannot do it. James is what, this is what James is saying here. If not with the help of our Lord, it's not possible. If not with the help of our Lord, it is not possible. Now, why did James mention the tongue as evil? Why is it evil, full of deadly poison, right? So, because out of our tongue comes words, speeches that can cause us to sin. 
out of our tongue can cause words that can cause us to sin. Like what I mentioned earlier, it could be lying, it could be gossiping. You're gossiping, you're not, if you're not part of the solution, you're not part of the problem, don't go there, right? If you want to define gossiping, that's it. <laughs> right, so you don't need, the truth is, you don't need to get angry to cause your tongue to go out of control. It's like, why are you always, at, or it can and be untamable. So James illustrates this example in the continuing verses. You know, James 3, 9 to 10 says, With the tongue, we praise our Lord and, and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. In verse 10, Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. And James highlighted another uh, word here. It's like, My brothers and sisters, this shouldn't be. If this is happening to you, this shouldn't be. It's like James didn't say, hey, my brothers and sisters, this is optional, okay? You can choose to praise or no, this shouldn't be. Right? So, and then in verse 11 and 12, we can go forward now. Can both fresh water, James Hyde used that, it, uh, used this as an illustration. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Like, my brothers and sisters, can a fig tree, can a fig tree bear olives? You have a fig tree and it bears olives. It's, it shouldn't be, it couldn't happen, right? Grapevine or a grapevine bear figs. Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So, fresh and salt water don't go together, right? And salt water couldn't produce fresh water, right? Just as fig trees cannot produce olives. Now, let me ask you, has this situation happened to you before? You know, you're doing your uh, worship and prayer time, uh, enjoying your moment. You know, you enjoy your moment, worshiping and praising God. Then somebody interrupts you. You know, somebody interrupts you, maybe a phone call or a family member asking you to do something. Then something triggered because the, that person may be too loud or something. Triggers your tongue to speak words. It could be lying, like what I mentioned earlier. It could be gossip or curse words. That don't praise or give honor to the Lord. Now, here's what James is saying here. This, this is happening in your life. James is just simply saying, this shouldn't be. My brothers and sisters, this needs to stop. If this is happening in your life, in the morning you praise God. You're driving to, you're driving to work. Right? Lord, thank you. You give honor, you give praise. And then you get a word. Oh, you see your boss. You see that, that uh, your friend me co-workers like oh my god and then you curse like that happens like there you know if, if like if it's your classmate if that happened if this is happening to you it shouldn't be if, if let's say if you're with your your you're just you're just here in church and then when you get home or coming here you heard you scold your your kids i'm not saying don't scold them like but you use words that are so hurtful and uh hurtful and cause them to, you know, so the, if this, James is saying, if this is happening, this shouldn't be, right? So, as the tongue is untamable, it is small but able to give or take life. Let me say it again. As the tongue is untamable, it is so small, it can give or take life. It can give or take life. The question is, how many people have we killed because of our words. How many people have you encouraged? And they're so full of life today because of your encouragement. Right? So nowadays, like what I mentioned, we use social media, right? FB, Twitter, IG. So as a tool to use our tongue. Because why? You don't see that person. You don't see the person. So it seems that it's so much easier to use hurtful words we also use the same platform. We use that same platform to greet. You send a verse in the morning, you know, use the same platform to greet people, encourage happy birthday, happy anniversary, you know, so, and then use encouraging, oh, uh, T-F-T-I. So you say those words and you encourage them. It's like, and then you use it to hate on people. You use the same platform. You open it, you look at it, oh, sh this person said something or that, that, that. So I tell, if this is happening again this needs to stop right 
So if James knows about social media, he could be the one tweeting, guys. Stop it. My brothers and sisters. Hashtag living faith now. <laughs> Victory so far, living faith now. So it says here, actually, as I end, uh, I'd like to share this verse. It says in Luke 6 45, in NIRV version, a good man says good things. This thing, this come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says what? Evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. Right. So what did we just read? What did I just read here? Jesus shares this message in the book of Luke about blessings and warnings. Right? So it says here in this text that a good man says good things that are stored up in his heart, while an evil man says evil things that stored up in his heart. So whatever we say is out of the abundance that's coming from your heart. It's out of the abundance that's coming from your heart. It's not like, ah, I can't stop it. My tongue just keeps going like this, you know. Sorry, kid. It just keeps saying curse words or flattery words. No. It's like it's, it's coming from the abundance of your heart. James, uh, Jesus is saying this in this text. Right? Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. That is what's inside. I, I'm just like, I didn't make it up. Jesus said this, right? So, question is, what are the words that are coming out of your tongue? Is it good or evil? Again, a person's mouth says everything in his heart. Right, join me in word of prayer. Father, thank you for your work today, God. Thank you, God, for reminding us about the power of the tongue, God. Lord, thank you, God, for uh, reminding us about giving praise, Lord, and the blessing and cursing, Lord, yeah. Lord, I pray, God, uh, for my brothers and sisters this afternoon, that as they hear the word, God, would you speak to them, Lord? Lord, I pray, God, if they have been, uh, there are words that were spoken to them, Lord, I pray the hurtful words or curse words and they've been uh, hurting God. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them, Lord. That they would believe that, God, that they are, uh, they would not be believe the lies that were given to them. The lies of the enemy, God. I pray that you would encourage them, Lord. Lord, I pray for also for my brothers and sisters who are, uh, who have been encouraging people and, and they've been going in that faith, steady faith with you, God. I just pray, Lord, that you would keep on encouraging them, God, as they uh, walk with you, as they do the mission that you have called them to do. Lord, thank you for this afternoon. We love you. We praise you. Yes, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.